Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this Neuroanatomy Basics tutorial we're going to take a look at the divisions and the organisation of the nervous system. So the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system consists of those structures which connect the central nervous system to peripheral structures. So in this tutorial I'll refer to the central nervous system as the CNS and the peripheral nervous system as the PNS. The CNS consists of the brain and the spinal cord which you can see in this diagram here. So the CNS is responsible for complex information processing. It is essentially our control center where all the environmental information is processed. The peripheral nervous system connects the central nervous system to peripheral structures. It receives sensory information and also sends out information to respond to this peripheral input. So in this diagram you can see the peripheral nervous system as extensions from the central nervous system. So the PNS consists of nerves which attach to the brain and to the spinal cord. So the nerves which connect to the brain are known as cranial nerves. And I'm just drawing these on here because it's not represented in the diagram. So the cranial nerves are mostly part of the peripheral nervous system. And then you can also see these nerves coming off the spinal cord. These are called spinal nerves and these are also a part of the peripheral nervous system. So the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves and all their branches are part of the peripheral nervous system. And just to point out while we're looking at this diagram, you've also got things called plexuses. So you can see up here, there's a network of interconnected nerves. This network allows the redistribution of different nerve fibers into different nerves. And this networking structure of peripheral nerves is known as a plexus. So the one over here is the brachial plexus and down here you can see another network of nerves and this is the lumbosacral plexus. And if you look to the side of the spinal cord you can see these round shaped structures. These are the ganglia. So these ganglia are collections of nerve cell bodies of the nerves from the peripheral nervous system. So examples of these are the dorsal root ganglia and autonomic ganglia. So before we move on, let's just take a look at the various divisions of the central nervous system. So as you know, it consists of the spinal cord and the brain. The brain can be broken down into various different components based on how it develops in embryological life. So what you've got is the forebrain, the midbrain and the hindbrain. And unfortunately, they do have some confusing names. So the hindbrain is called the rhombencephalon, the midbrain is called the mesencephalon, and the forebrain is called the prosencephalon. So it all comes from Greek words. Now the hindbrain can be broken down further into the myelencephalon and the metencephalon. So the myelencephalon develops into the medulla, which you can see that I've outlined in red. The metencephalon forms the pons and the cerebellum, and you can see that I've outlined those structures in blue. So the midbrain is referred to as the mesencephalon and the midbrain consists of the tectum and the tegmentum and you can see it highlighted here in this light blue colour. Now we're coming to the forebrain which is known as the prosencephalon and this has two parts to it really. It's got the telencephalon and the diencephalon. What we're looking at here is the diencephalon. So in, in the light green colour you've got the thalamus and in the orange colour you've got the hypothalamus. So in this diagram what we've done is we've taken a sagittal section through the middle of the brain. So the telencephalon is essentially the cerebrum which encompasses the cerebral cortex and the subcortical structures like the basal ganglia, the hippocampus and the amygdala. So I've just outlined that in red. So that's a brief run through the basic anatomical organisation of the central nervous system. So having taken a look at the central nervous system, let's return to the peripheral nervous system and look at how this is split up. Essentially, you've got two parts to it. You've got the somatic part and the autonomic part. So the autonomic part can then be further subdivided into the parasympathetic, the sympathetic and the enteric nervous system. And within these, these components of the peripheral nervous system, you've also got sensory and motor divisions.
So the somatic nervous system is responsible for conscious perception and voluntary motor responses. So it's responsible for contraction of skeletal muscle. The autonomic nervous system, on the other hand, is responsible for the involuntary control of the body. So it's involved in maintaining our internal environment and maintaining homeostasis. It regulates that internal environment and keeps everything under control. So to just talk about the autonomic nervous system in a little bit more detail, autonomic comes from the Greek meaning self-governing. So auto means self and nomos means law. What the autonomic nervous system does is it detects and monitors changes in the activity of the viscera and it can help to control them. It supplies and innovates things like the cardiac and smooth muscle as well as glands and their secretions. So as I mentioned before, you've got some subdivisions of the autonomic nervous system and these subdivisions tend to do opposite things to each other and in this respect they're antagonistic. So the two main components are the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system is involved in resting and digesting, whereas the sympathetic nervous system is involved in the fight and flight response. So parasympathetic, rest and digest, sympathetic, fight and flight. And this is a broad generalization, but it helps you to get an idea of the function. So these divisions are distinct both functionally and anatomically. The final division of the autonomic nervous system, the third division, which is less talked about, is the enteric nervous system. And this is located in plexuses within the gastrointestinal system. And it's responsible for controlling smooth muscle and glandular tissue in the digestive system. Now just to come back to the somatic nervous system. This branch of the peripheral nervous system is responsible for conscious perception and voluntary motor responses. So this diagram just shows how a peripheral stimulus can be picked up and transmitted along a neuron, a sensory neuron, into the central nervous system. And then the central nervous system can coordinate a response and cause skeletal muscle contraction in response. So the somatic nervous system is responsible for consciously processed information that results in skeletal muscle contraction. Now this brings me on to the next division that we can make within the nervous system. So we've talked about the different components of the peripheral nervous system and now we can talk about the peripheral nerve fibers in terms of their functional divisions. So right here we can talk about the sensory and motor divisions. So the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system is known as the afferent division whereas the motor component, the part which results in skeletal muscle contraction, is known as the efferent division. In this diagram the blue axon represents the sensory division. So this is the division which brings the stimulus from the periphery into the center. And the efferent division is represented by this red neuron. So this red neuron is a motor neuron. So you've got this functional division of neurons into sensory and motor. Sensory are afferent, motor are efferent. And a mnemonic for this is the word same. So S-A-M-E, sensory, afferent, motor, efferent. And how you remember whether afferent or efferent leaves or goes towards the central nervous system is using the mnemonic afferent arrives, efferent exits. Now in terms of the autonomic nervous system, you've also got sensory and motor components or afferent and efferent components. So taking a look at this diagram, just to illustrate the point, we've got a sensory nerve ending up here which is detecting some kind of peripheral stimulus. For example, it could be detecting stretch in the aortic or carotid sinuses, so stretch in the smooth muscle wall of a blood vessel, and it feeds back into the central nervous system and a response is provided to relax the smooth muscle wall. So you've got a sensory component which picks up that stretch in the carotid or aortic sinuses in the blood vessel wall, and then you've got a motor component, or an efferent component, which feeds back to the blood vessel smooth muscle. So that's an example of afferent and efferent components in the autonomic nervous system, so sensory and motor components. Other words used to describe functional divisions in peripheral nerves are somatic and visceral. So somatic just refers to skin and muscles, and visceral refers to nerves innervating internal organs. So there's a few words now that we've used to describe the functional divisions of peripheral nerve fibers. 
sensory and motor, synonymous with afferent and efferent. And now we've talked about somatic and visceral, relating to skin and muscles and internal organs, respectively. When you talk about cranial nerves, another element is thrown in. You actually have nerve fibres in the head which convey information relating to the special senses. So now you've got taste, smell, vision, hearing and balance thrown into the mix. And because you've got these special senses, nerve fibres are also divided into general and special. But we'll take a look at this in the cranial nerve tutorials. So just to put these examples into context, let's use this diagram here to combine those words we've just talked about. So this is a nerve picking up a peripheral stimulus, for example, in the, from the blood vessel wall, the stretch receptors in a blood vessel wall. So this is visceral because it's relating to blood vessels. And it's also bringing information into the spinal cord, so bringing it into the center. So it's an afferent neuron. This would be called a visceral afferent nerve fiber. Now the nerve fiber leaving from the center to innervate the smooth muscle wall and cause relaxation or contraction is called a visceral efferent. So you've got a visceral afferent and a visceral efferent. Now coming back to this diagram, we've got an afferent nerve fiber conveying a peripheral stimulus from the hand, so from a touch receptor. So this is a somatic afferent. And then you've got this nerve fiber which begins in the ventral horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord and it innervates skeletal muscle. So this is a motor neuron and it's efferent. So this is a somatic efferent. So we've got a somatic afferent and a somatic efferent fiber or a motor fiber. So that's an overview of the divisions of the nervous system. If you have found this video helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel and make sure you check out some more of our videos. Thank you for watching.